Hi guys, it's Watch Gambit here, and today's episode is all about Voltiline and Leyena and the goodies that they bring to the market. It will be a bit of a sweet and sour piece because um, loving the brand and then having difficulties to understand certain aspects of the pieces. It maybe this episode could be called five lions and an elephant and I'll tell you what that means in just a little while well <clears throat> um, the brand owner and the company that has these pieces manufactured Perco the brand owner of Leona um, was kind enough to borrow me a few pieces. I had a look and took some photos and tried to get to know the pieces and here is the review. Um, let's do a wrist check first. Uh, in my wrist today is something I bought myself a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago, when Leona Oiva came to the market with a few different colors and this limited piece 50 units made the Mertiers special edition uh, we'll have a look at that also a bit later on and then i have a couple of chronos a couple of divers in the shipment i got also a couple of exchange bezels uh, an extra uh, silicone and this booklet and a leather tray and <clears throat> what i've noticed in the market is that quite many people who let's say criticize are critical obviously it's good to be critical to the brand struggle to uh, find the connection between the exceptional grandmaster and watchmaker karibo dilanen and the leyena brand and based on my 30 minute google research and um, i came to the conclusion that if you don't know what the link is you haven't really even looked at it because it's fairly obvious in the leona heritage sites and and the places where you can by googling find all the information necessary to make the link uh, some of it i found also in this booklet that came along um, presenting the different models but mostly it's from from the uh, leonheritage.com website i'll link that to the description for you to find out as well um the brand of course is is uh, dearly beloved by by many many Finns because of its tradition and the tradition is is quite long the origin of leona brand logo came from the swiss manufacturer of the pocket watches that watchmaker Johan Werner Lindros started importing to Finland in the very early 1900s. The Swiss trademark ar archives show that the unique lion with a shield a logo was first registered by watchmaker Albert Canel and company in December 1880 and continued by manuf manufacturer Horlogerie de Lyon SA uh, from 1892. And, um, 1909 and 1910 there were registry marks with the Finnish name Leona and the stylized capital L on the shield of the lion by Camille Bohr and Montrelion and Leona Watch Company. Basically the same lion and the shield logo that you can see also in the cover of this booklet. Uh, the Leona brand choice made by Mr. Lindros early in the 1900s was quite um, well done spot on because it was a heraldic lion in general that symbolized the Finnish aspirations for independence at the time and the uh, lion has been in the emblems describing Finland since the 1580s with a multitude of official uses such as stamps and flags and, and so on and after gaining independence in 1917, the lion has been a national coat of arms of the Republic of Finland. 
Leon is owned by the Perco family since 1919. Um, the Heritage lineup has four models at the moment. I have three of them here, basically. Uh, the one one model is, is not here. I did not request to have a look at that because it doesn't suit my eye that well, so decided to uh, give that a miss. Uh, one of them I have bought immediately after it came out, uh, two and a half years ago, and two of the types are on loan from Perco, the brand owner of Leona. The names of the models honor the founding brothers, first names Yalo, Oiva and Urho, and their lives work in the group. I don't have the yellow in here. And Oiva is what I have in the wrist today. I have the special edition Matiers. And uh, the Matiers, of course, comes from the atelier that Mr. Votilan has. And where he works. And there are about 15 artisans that work there together with him making around 50 watches per year. He has full or partial ownership in other businesses as well, which are linked to these watches. Um, many people still ask, what is the connection of Leona to Karibautilainen? And he's really more than a face in this project. And, and, and um, even when the project started, and, and Leona thought that to celebrate their 100 years Perco and Leona connection, they started planning this in 2017. And Perco was working on an idea of having some, some of the more interesting vintage watches updated and remade in a new modern level of quality. As one of the main watch components embodying the visual aesthetics in the dial, Grandmaster Bautilainen was contacted also because of his supply chain and all of that and they were working on the idea for a while and and um, in a discussion Bautilan and proposed and actually agreed to take on the full manufacturing process and assembly of the new line of watches in Switzerland. The initial sketches were drawn in Finland and a sourcing partner in uh, sourcing of the parts in Switzerland began. Uh, the final production blueprints, tools, designs were created in Switzerland by Wautilainen as they are all steps of the actual manufacturing process and um, the cases are made by Wautilainen and Katan Esa who also assembles the complete watches and tests them. The dials in all of the models are made by Comblemin Essant, um, which is also part owned by Bautilainen, and the straps by Rhein Fils. So that is the connection. It's quite a remarkable connection and, and really more than just the face. Um, I seem to have lost one strap here. Gonna pick it up and not edit this bit out because it's <laughs> real life and that was the history part i hope you're still with me because um, everyone might not find history as interesting and stories as interesting as as i do well the cases <clears throat> so the cases are made by Bautilainen and Katan Esa and the cases undergo a series of manual processes to take their shape and finish. Uh, the assembly is they made there as well and checking the operation and water resistance. And, and here is a look at one of the first divers cases. Let's dive that. Uh, dive into that a little bit deeper when we look at the individual models. <clears throat> um, so, um, 
After World War II and during the post-war rebuild period, well into the 1950s, Finland had set actually a quota on many imported goods, including watches. And basically that was to protect um, the homeland production, including watches, and to control the outflow of funds from Finland. This led to the rapid, rapid growth of smuggling and contraband watches, and as a measure to constrain and restrict the contraband activities, Perko actually labeled the cases that were made in Switzerland with this P that is inside a circle, and it's also brought into the heritage models as a nice little feature to remind us of that fact. One funny thing to notice also is that the lion with the shield has a snorkel and diving goggles on for a diver watch. That's pretty funny and, and uh, <laughs> a suitable nod into the diving world. As well as the statement in Finnish in the silicon strap. Hyviä dykkejä. Good diving. Have a nice dive. And the lion emblem on the other side. <coughs> um, that's a pretty sentimental feature and, and and funny and playful, which is pretty cool for a piece of this caliber and, and price setting. Uh, the bracelets and the straps, both, and also the leathers are made by uh, Ryan Fills, Provoga AG, a Bern Canton based company that has been making quality straps since 1913 and they use this Maroquinery technique that contains 50 steps to make a leather strap like we have in this Oiva Metiers. This is alligator skin and let's have a look at that closer as well and it's only getting better in in use it was a little bit stiff to begin with with the lion stamp on the other side and the alligator veritable on the other side Um, so um, then the other leather in the chronos is a racing type leather and as much as I can figure out out of this it's probably made in three layers and the edges are burnt to be nice and smooth and, and uniform and it's quite a nice piece of work as well. So clearly Ryan's Fields knows their stuff regarding leather straps. These are getting better with age and are looking pretty nice and solid and good good quality. The black one in the other chrono is similarly nice and shiny and really robust feeling. Maybe the keepers are not quite up to the standard of the main strap, but all quite nice and, and sturdy. But, well, speaking of Ryan and Phils, they also make or have this made the, the, the metal bracelet for the diver that comes in as the second option and that is not quite to the same level they are obviously, obviously used to making a lot of leather things and maybe trying to get into metals or doing it as a favor to Votilainen and, and, and his pet project but 
this really leaves something to be desired. <clears throat> well, one of the things I'll tell you straight that I'm not a big fan of of uh, five piece link bracelet in general, especially when the couple middle parts are are polished and glossy and the other three parts are matte stainless type so for me that is an old man's bracelet doesn't suit my style um, fairly sturdy articulates extremely well but the weak link is down here in the bottom there is a clever diving extension by twisting this little switch here you can adjust to diving length quite nicely but the buckle the clasp itself is uh, for some reason they are trying to make it too tricky or too let's say unique uh, and it doesn't function really well the tolerances are not correct this is wiggling from the end and the locking system comes from these little nudges here that go inside and under the folding piece which has I don't know if this shows that well but has these little cutouts there it goes into place well but it doesn't come out reliably so if you apply opening pressure first and then push the buttons it doesn't really open at all you can pull it as fucking hard as you can and still nothing happens the trick is to press it first wiggle it a little bit and then it opens and you get the hang of it if you have this in use the whole time it might not even be a problem in the long term but i would not expect this in a 5k diving watch that is supposed to be top of the line and top of the heap type of product so that is my first minus the bracelet sucks please redesign it retolerate it so that it actually works and it doesn't have to be this complicated check out Sego's bracelets and check out some other major brand bracelets they are not wiggly pieces like this in the class bearing improvement point and last but not least the craft blue silicones I've seen a lot of silicones uh, in my days and I would say this ranks in top three at least probably could be even the best I've ever seen very nice flexible stretches is very thin feels excellent subtle and I love the texture in the surface because when a silicone wears out it leaves these shiny patches if this is totally flat but now this texture keeps it nice looking for a long time I would assume not having seen one in real life that's been in use for a long time but anyway excellent excellent silicone and it also comes in dark blue navy blue which is really fitting this limited edition version of the first time so uh, yeah that was about the straps three product lines 
four straps and maybe we'll leave the best thing last which is by far the dials so complement dudes you know your stuff i mean jesus these dials are gorgeous finished beautifully yeah my daughter light again not giving the best opportunity to get into this but my god these dials i mean i have a gs say grand seiko and i would say the quality of finish of these dials is almost up there not quite but very very close to that that level of, of quality so uh, apparently <clears throat> they have this wet sand blasting technique which makes the surfaces very flat and then they galvanize well basically it's anodization a form of anodization of the dial and then applied indices and and then the logos and these really are top top notch all the way down to the <coughs> indices and, and and scales scales there and the framed date windows and and the uh, hands are gorgeous and maybe what takes really the cake is the dial of the chrono with all the machining in the sub dials the little nod towards the history with the red 45 in the right hand side sub dial that was also in the heritage version 50 years ago the cut indices are really top top notch and yeah leaves nothing to desire there and the reverse panda panda yeah uh, panda not reversed the panda dial absolutely gorgeous as well and i'll try to capture these in some of the stills I'll take into my Insta account. A um, couple of extra bezel rings to complement exchange in the diver. So the fully black one comes with the uh, Coke Zero version diver. Uh, red and black and there are two different blues for the limited so a little bit more striking the other one and with a little bit of a gradient darker blue maybe to represent the different layers of the water when, when diving so nice touch there the subtle one which is now in place well i would probably exchange it out if I wore this myself for a longer period. So the components. Okay. I mean, uh, the dials, I can't get over the fact that, yeah, hand painted indices, hands, super luminova, multifaceted indices uh, in the chrono and the sub dials and, and listen to this who does Comblemine make dials for and what price range are those watches in Sarpaneva, Swartz Etienne, Luomala, Sartori, Grönefeld have a look at for example Armistrom Gravity Equal Force Jungle Green it's a 25,000 euro watch I'll put the link uh, in the description. Um, 
Murakumo by Kikuchi Nagagawa. You've probably seen that. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. 21,000. That watch. And complimenting dial. Bradley Taylor's Paragon. 22,000. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. The only, let's say, even close to the French range of Leonas that I found using complement dials is Ophion OPH786 Velos, which is uh, <clears throat> just under 3000 euros. And in that case, Curry made also the case in addition to the dial. So, well, you should be looking at Ophion if you are into that type of watches, and it's really, really a top notch piece. If you haven't checked that out already, do that. Uh, into the watches themselves. Um, so there are uh, three lineups here. Let's check out the OEMA first because this is my own piece. So, so, so. Uh, rose gold PVD case. Classic, classic. Uh, suit wearing watch with beautiful golden hands logo indices numbers the traditional L in the crown and the case back of a limited edition this my piece is 28 out of 50 and the P in the circle, and it is a beautiful piece, 39 mm, which is suiting for a, a suit watch. Haven't worn a suit in a couple of years because of COVID and business occasions being more teams than than face to face. But this um, is on um, Independence Day, birthdays whatever parties, family parties are there, LA and I is on and it is a pretty pretty piece. It came in a leather box branded multi-line and artisan of Lorgerie dot Leona and carried a hand tag also branded multi-line and uh, well, nothing else here, and a warranty card with all the details. I'm not going to show those to you this time, but a really, really nice box as well. So that is my own piece, and that I could somehow talk myself into buying they came to the market 2019 October and I pulled the trigger immediately without even seeing the piece and got to choose the serial number and, and everything so nice uh, chain of events there um, well Obviously, around this, there is the same elephant in the room as, as with the other PCs, which is the price setting. <clears throat> 39 mil watch, 20 mil lugs, dials available in white, black, or, or this blue one. Screw down case back, lasered alligator strap and the name derives from a famous skilled goldsmith in the Perco family, Oiva Perco. Um, <clears throat> if you look at other pieces that are, let's say, similar spec, Celita SW200, you might get hits like Tissot Visodate, Tissot Le Locle, they are 700 euros, maybe a Bauer Mercier Classima 
that's 1150. Or Clifton with the Kosk movement, that's 3200 retail without discounts. So it is an expensive watch, I mean, in, in the class. And you have to have some sort of link either to the brand or, or the idea or whatever behind this to really understand the pricing or to, let's say, accept it with its uh, limitations or whatever might come to mind. It is a gorgeous piece. I'm never gonna own a gold watch because it's it's not my style really. This is sort of the closest I could possibly go. Uh, while my prostata is still working, so so, so uh, <clears throat> Leonidas, and I'm pretty happy with this piece as it is. <clears throat> the next one is Urho Chronograph. It's a 42 mil bicompact chrono. Date at six, um, it comes either as a black, white panda, or blue dial. The case is water resistant to 100 meters, <clears throat> and um, it also has a sapphire case back window viewing the Salita SW510 BHA doing its job um, strap options are brown black blue and, uh, and and it's a racing type sort of a ventilated one if you wear this all summer you're gonna have these <laughs> brown out dots in your wrist here <clears throat> and uh, this one inherits the name from Uro Perco. He was the youngest of three brothers founding the Perco AB and was a skilled watchmaker. Uh, he was described as being always accurate and style conscious, conscious and 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 uh, yeah, what stunners these pieces are. And uh, the same elephant in the room as as with the other. Pieces. Um, <clears throat> if you put it in comparison with, for example, um, let's say a limited supply units like Nevada Grench and Broad Arrow, that chrono has the same movement, a really great looking dial, of course, different style to this, and um, it is under 1900 euros. This is 4500 approximately. For 2600, you get a long jeans big guy, which is a beautiful watch with a great movement, with a really long power reserve, and uh, you know, 80 hours. This one is like 45 something. You, for 5k you get a Tudor BB Chrono, for 3600 you get a Zin 903, for 2000 in the same style as this you get a Hamilton Intramatic. All great pieces and again the watch itself is really really gorgeous it's a bit thick 16 mil beautiful polishing vertical in the lugs polished in the top horizontal in the sides great job Catan is out with the chrono nicely finished and everything but I mean, it is really 
difficult to get people to swallow the price tag of this one with all the fierce fierce competition in the same class and this one is with the Celita 510 so you can get a COSC for or yeah, well you have to have a link with the brand you have to grow that link you have to understand the heritage and all of that and uh, if you are from abroad, not from Finland, you might struggle with that task. <clears throat> the Panda one, absolutely gorgeous as well. I love a Panda dial. And, uh, well, to put this in competition with something, let's have a playoff idea, for example, around my favorite panda in the box <clears throat> Seiko SRQ29 um, three sub dials the dial itself I would say it's 50-50 both are really excellent this is <clears throat> yeah. They are both a bit bulky, but this is a column chrono, column barrel chrono. In the case, Seiko wins the battle. In the movement, Seiko wins the battle. Seiko has a metal bracelet, which is absolutely gorgeous and functions perfectly. And lay on a there is no metal available, it's a racing strap or something that you put in yourself. So, <sighs> nothing wrong with the Urho as a product, but I just can't. As a watch hobbyist who's seen um, 250 watches in two years, I just can't understand the price setting for this. The product speaks for itself, but uh, think about it. <coughs> first, <laughs> yeah, this should have been the first because first things first. Because this is more or less where the story also began between uh, Rotilanen and, and Perko when they started to develop this heritage line. Um, Kari has been very much involved and, and this apparently, based on what I've re read, resembles quite a lot the first watch that Kari ever had. A Leona diver with a red and black bezel ring and, uh, and uh, well, there's a story like, like that existing, maybe. Maybe it happened. Um, <clears throat> first, I haven't heard where that name originates from. It was the first, I guess. So, first, first in Finnish is also the first officer uh, on uh, a ship. Maybe it's that link. I don't know. Maybe you could explain and, and expand on, on that idea. But it's really well brought into today regarding the design. Nice polishing, really unique bevel in the corner of the uh, lugs and top side brushed and screwing crown 200 meters, watertight 20 atmos in the dial. Um, and the same case back as <coughs> seen before and let's have a listen to the bezel action a little bit of back play aligns pretty well sounds 
smooth as silk and works really nice. Um, 20 mil lug. Uh, the case looks sort of like a barrel case, morning case, and resembles that. Some added finesse with the polishing things. But <clears throat> of course, in the catalog, when you are sort of thinking of buying a driver, and there is a front face view of this piece, what does it remind? a let's say watch hobbyist someone who's seen a lot of pieces to me what comes to mind is a Serratino DS action diver which is 13.1 43 diameter so this one is 17 uh, 12.75 12 and uh, 40.5 is my measurement there's different information on different websites some say it's 39 some say it's 41 some say yeah 40.5 is the bezel diameter this one is 200 certainly nice 300 water resistance so you can get a certain titanium for 1140 so uh, and it looks similar there's the Leona and the heritage and and they are trying to build the brand up to be a luxury item brand but this is 5k 5000 euros in that price range you are fighting with an um, omega c master on a silicone Omega Railmaster, Tudor Pelagos, Tudor BBGMT, Brightling Super Ocean, Panerai Radiomir. Is this in that category? It is a stretch, man. Hoo -hoo. Again, nothing wrong with the piece. I like a lot of the things they've done. The case needs a little bit work these corners are really really razor sharp because they've left material so that it can be repolished and repolished over the years but the first one buying this oof, i haven't encountered corners like this in any watch try that out take it out of the box take it out of the display and and try that jesus I don't get any of that in a Seiko or yeah, other major brands making a lot of watches. This is not on a limited model, so basically, uh, again, let's take a little comparison. What is a 5000 euro Seiko? <clears throat> Admittedly, it comes on a silicone. I would say the quality of this silicone, they are feeling different, but they are both excellent, excellent quality. The Seiko is a titanium case with a Cermet bezel and the Leona it's a stainless stainless with a stainless bezel ring this one is Cermet Seiko is 300 meters Leon is 200 meters um, and uh, the dial finish I would say they are pretty matchy matchy I would say regarding quality Seiko has better hands in my opinion and better indices but the background of the dial is pretty up there on a similar level this one is limited 200 
this one is limited 50 so <sighs> using my own money this wins every time every day all week and twice on a Sunday Oh, what Leona wins in is the wearability. This is a bit chunky, a chunky piece. Leona wrists absolutely gorgeously. I mean, <clears throat> in my 17.7 centimeter wrist. Have a look at that fit. I mean, the logs curve perfectly, the case back is very nice. It, I mean, I've had these on during this week, um, last week, and, and, and you put it on in the morning, you glance it every now during the day, every now and then during the day, but you don't really even notice it's there. I mean, it's lightweight, absolutely gorgeous wearability and fits nicely so if you like this sort of look and you are prepared to pay 5k for a limited lion with a gorgeous dial and a absolutely perfect crafter blue strap I don't blame you I can't do it If you wear, uh, prefer a metal, I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to wear this. It's, the bracelet is just so, so much below the other parts of the product in, in finish and detail that, that, and functionality, so, no, and I, usually prefer a metal in a dialer so difficult difficult for me the unlimited first tee would be on a black rubber strap this is perfect the blue chrono can't say a bad thing about this as a product I love a racing chrono with sub dials and I've had dozens of chronos and <clears throat> looking for the perfect one and I still think it's this pad it could be a little bit bigger for my particular taste something like 42 but in every other aspect it beats the Urho unfortunately for me it's a gorgeous piece to look at this this Leyena buttons function nice and, and precise and it all really rocks hard but I can't get over the elephant in the room putting that much much money into this well I mean I'm, I'm seriously torn between the idea of what the hell and, and and well it's a problems of the first world and and someone who can't afford <laughs> um, another watch in the 5k range and just have it there and wear it every now and then but also, on the other hand, I love the idea that Leona is building a heritage lineup that is drawing from the pack back catalogue and bringing them to the new technology and uh, latest uh, production techniques and finishes. And obviously, linking with Botilan brings all of that to the game. But at this point, when it's fiercing that competition that exists now 
in this price range. I can't buy one of these. My honest, honest, humble opinion. If I got one as a present, I would be ecstatic over the moon. Great piece, beautiful, well finished, well thought out. If I had to buy one myself, it would have to cost between two, two and a half thousand. That's my price setting for it. So, painful, yes. Love the brand, love the heritage, love the tradition, love the connection of Odilon and Leena, but I can't understand the price setting. I honestly can't. And I've seen a lot of watch hobbyists who struggle with the very same thing. It is difficult. So, when you have a chance to think about it, do that. And I'm sure you have comments. So, please share those. You can curse at me, you can tell me to go to hell with my ideas, but that's what I do think as a avid watch hobbyist who loves the Lena brand, has bought a 2790 euro suit watch that he uses maybe 5 to 10 days a year but struggles to understand the price setting on these other two models. So, something else in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this rant and talk to you later. Cheers.